Hi everyone, I'm Alex and in this video I'm going to tell you all about the 3D Max interface. When you first start up, you'll see a screen like this. This is a standard display of everything that can be in the Max and I'll tell you a little bit about what is where and from what side. The first thing you'll see in the middle of the screen are four big windows like this. They're called viewports. Each viewport is responsible for a different angle that you will use to see the objects. You can see the name of the viewport in the upper left of the window. For example, this window is called the front, which means you will see everything that is in the front of your scene and your objects in the front. There's also a top view window and a window with a view of the left. The most important view that we can have is called the perspective. This is the perspective that you're going to be working from most often in your scene and you're going to use the perspective uh, to figure out where things are and how to manipulate those objects. To manipulate this window all we have to do is use the wheel and spin it toward to you and away from you and you get closer or farther away from your scene. You can also press Alt and the mouse wheel to scroll around the existing scene. You can press Ctrl and the mouse wheel to move the left or right of the scene. In this way you will move relative to your scene. To switch between these windows, just left click in that window and you will switch to the selection of that window. I can go to the top and move the wheel left to right. Go to the left by pressing the left mouse button and then I can click the wheel and move left to right. So I'll just change the window to work in. You have the same scene, but you just change the viewing window. Also in the interface we have a right panel called the command panel, where you can set some basic commands or create objects. By standard you should have a window like this. So you can uh, create a set of standard primitives. For example, it could be a sphere. To create a sphere we select it with the left mouse button, you get some parameters for it and now while the sphere button is lit in blue, we can create the sphere. I would create it in perspective window. As I just said, that's where we're most likely to work. In order to do it on this existing grid here. All you have to do is hold down the left mouse button and pull the mouse to the side as the sphere is created. But still while the sphere button is lit in blue, this means that we will go on and on creating sphere. So I can click the left mouse button again and pull, pull again and again. And each time a new object will be created. You can see all these objects from different angles. Here is the top view, here is the front view, here and on the left side you can see all the objects. You can see that they are organized and you can see that they are standing next to each other. To stop creating spheres and exit this creation mode, all you have to do is right click in the perspective, click and that's all. You can see that the sphere is no longer lit blue which means that we are not creating objects. And at this stage we can, for example, select them to do some manipulations with them. Also, in the interface we have a list of all the objects that are present in your stream. For example, we have here a sphere 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And we can see everything that we have here right now. But in full scenes it can be thousands of objects and tens of thousands of objects. And if you're given them a name, you can search for them, select them, turn them off, delete, do a lot of different manipulations. At the top of the screen you can see the tabs, file, edits, tools, group, they are all called tabs. There are a lot of functions that you can't just find. I mean they won't be in the command panel and you can use keyboard shortcuts to call them. But most of them can actually be invoked in some way. In a faster way you should refer here only if you need really specific things. 
For example, if you need to go to the parameters of the old 3D Max and see what you can do with it. Or to load some plugins, but that's a whole other story. Underneath them, these arrows, this chain, these circles, this uh, dot and squares. These are all the tools and the bindings and extra functions. So you can do a lot of different processes here. Which is really cool, you can customize this menu. But you can also use it as a quick access to something. Like these two arrows, select and move. Is a tool, of course, for selecting and moving. Hotkey W. But we can select it with the mouse. And now when we select any object, we'll have these arrows. And you can grab those arrows and uh, you can move the object. So we can manipulate it. If you want to go back to the tool you had, it's just a select tool. You have to select this button here called Select Object. Just by clicking on it. Now we'll be able to just select an object, click, click, click. I also have this panel underneath, them with camera, light, sunshine. You may not have that because it's an additional panel. Like I said, they can be customized. And that's from the individual plugins that I've left. I can add or remove buttons for quicker access. Underneath our viewports, there is a ruler like this. This is an animation timeline. You can use it to record any animation you want to play. It can be from uh, something complex like a character movement, it could be a character jumping, a character running, or something as simple as moving the camera from point A to point B in order to fly around an object, to look at it from different angles and display it as full of video rather than a static image. Also, at the bottom, you can use the little menu. There's a locker and a target and uh, an X, Y, Z value. These are the coordinates of your object and the values in the space of your objects. For example, we can go back to the move tool. And now, when I select an object, we can see its position in your scene, in all the X, Y, Z axes. By clicking on each object, each object will have its own parameters. For example, you can see that all of them have a Z of 0. But if I take the blue arrow here and move the sphere a little bit, I can see that Z immediately changes, because I changed the position of this object on this axis. You can also write here the values you want. For example, I can write exactly 17. Enter. And the object became at coordinates 17 on Z, which can also be interesting, especially when specifying more precise coordinates and positioning of objects. I will talk about each of the buttons in more details in the next videos, but for now it's worth understanding that this menu will help you navigate and slightly align objects in the position you want. But for now it's worth understanding that this menu will help you navigate and slightly align objects in the position you want, either in the scale you want or rotation angle. To the right are buttons that are probably in every player. They allow you to work with this ruler, the animation timeline. So, I can press play and my animation timeline starts playing. But it's trying to play animation, there is no animation yet. But still, this animation bar starts moving. I can stop, I can start, I can rewind to the end, rewind to the beginning. Basic actions for animated processes. And on the right side there are additional buttons. That's creating keys and uh, that's also for animation. More right, these are different manipulations of your viewport, like zoom in, zoom out and customize the angles that you need. What to do if you broke something in the interface? Uh, move the window, move something, some of the windows disappeared, you accidentally close it and you don't know how to put it back in place. First of all, we can reset all the settings to the standard ones. To do this, just go to the Customize tab, select Custom Default Switcher. We can window like this in which two useful items are already selected as standard. 
On the left, standard Max settings. And on the right, default UI, standard interface settings. By pressing the set button, it will reset everything to the standard settings and put the windows where they were. If you still want to customize something manually and reposition each of the window by moving them and put them where you like. For example, if you don't like the command panel on the right side for some reason, every menu and command panel has these dotted lines. And if you look closely, most of the panels have them. Even small menus have dotted lines. These are vertical dashed lines. Which means that I can left click on that dot line, pull that menu out to leave it on top of something. Or move it to some panel that can enter the menu, like the top panel. The same thing with the command bar. I can grab it, I can pull it, I can detach it from the menu. Put it where you need it, where you like it, pin it to the left, pin it to the right. And now you'll see these blue bars appear right away, here. So just grabbing the name, in this case, left click, pull on the right side of the screen until an additional window like this appears, which will be highlighted in blue, indicating that you're actually entering this menu here. I think we're done with the interface. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and it will be more interesting from now on.